It is time once again for Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Isaiah 37 today, beginning in verse number 1. Get your Bible and open it up to Isaiah chapter 37, and we'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There are four complete series going through every verse of the Bible, plus this fifth one that we are in right now. The New Testament is completed, the Old Testament, right up until where we are today, Isaiah 37. It is archived, along with the previous four series, at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that's found at the Bible versebyverse.com. So go there, choose, click, and listen. Study God's Word at your pace, at your convenience, at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Isaiah 37, verse 1, And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it. Heard what? Well, if you were with us last time, the king of Assyria sent representatives to threaten the Israelites, we're going to conquer you just like we conquered everybody else, and their gods couldn't help them, and your God, Israel, won't be able to help you either. And now the representatives of King Hezekiah go and tell him, and as the Bible says here, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. The most important thing he did was go into the house of the Lord and pray. Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, was, a, was boasting, not just against Israel. He was boasting against the Lord God. And he was threatening Jerusalem with his huge army. And the Israelites, including their king, were worried. And the correct response is exactly what Hezekiah did. Pray. Verse 2. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth unto Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. King Hezekiah was a good man, a godly king for Judah. And he shows respect for God by not demanding that the prophet Isaiah come to him. Instead, Hezekiah sends messengers to the prophet, which shows that he is subject to God and to God's prophet. He is ruling under the lordship of God. Verse 3, And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy. For the children have come to birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. In other words, he says, we're in big trouble. We're all scared. The enemy has insulted God, and we're too weak to fight him. Verse 4, it may be the Lord your God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. He's saying that they can't do anything about Assyria insulting God, but they hope that God will do something about it. All they can do is pray that he does, and so they are praying. Verse 5, So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall you say unto your master, Thus says the Lord, Be not afraid of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land." Well, God says, don't be afraid of the Assyrians' threats and of their insults. 
God says he's heard everything that the Assyrians have said about him. So don't be afraid. God's keeping track. God says he's not going to hurt you. That king of Assyria, he's not going to hurt you. And God knows which buttons to push to get people to do whatever it is he wants them to do. God is not bound by anyone or anything. And the king of Assyria went home and died in 681 B.C. and he was murdered by his own sons. How about that? I will send a spirit upon him and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. And it happened. Just as God said it was going to do or what was going to happen. Verse 8. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria, Assyria warring against Libna. For he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. Well, the king of Assyria left. And it happened just as God said that it would. He left. No more threats on Israel right now. Verse 9. And he heard concerning ter king of Ethiopia. He has come forth to make war with you. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah saying, Now watch this. Watch this. King of Syria heard that the king of Ethiopia was coming after him. So he sent the message to Hezekiah, the king of Israel. This, look at this guy. Here's his message. 10. Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be taken into the hand of the king of Assyria. Just because we're going in a different direction, it's just temporary. Don't trust in your God. And don't believe him when he tells you that you're going to be safe from me because he's lying. He's deceiving you. Verse 11. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands by destroying them utterly. And shall you be delivered? You're no different than anybody else. Well, you know what? He's right. They were no different than anybody else. But their God sure was different than any other so-called God. God Almighty. Just like when they were down in Egypt, God Almighty made the difference. And he will make the difference again. Verse 12, have the gods of the nations delivered them whom my fathers have destroyed as Gozan and Haran and Rezeph and the children of Eden who were in Telassar? Have their gods won? What does that have to do with anything? The gods of other nations didn't help them, so they were defeated. Okay, fine. Their gods are dead. They're not, no, they're not even dead. They never were. That's why they couldn't help them. 13. Look at this. Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arphad and the king of the city of Seraphim, Hina and Iva? In other words, he says, where are the kings now? Where are all those kings that we whooped up on? Where are they now? And he says that because they defeated them all. But you know why? Because we're mighty Assyria. That's why. Well, look at 14. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. He prays again. He received this threatening letter saying, Don't get overconfident simply because we're going a different direction for a, for a few minutes here. We'll be back and your God won't be able to help you. You're going to fall just like everybody else. So Hezekiah read that thing, probably scared. That's okay. Nothing wrong with fear as long as you... Respond to it the correct way, and he did by praying. 15. Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel that dwells between the cherubim, you are the God, even you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. In other words, Hezekiah says, God, you are God. You rule over everyone and everything because you have made everything. Hezekiah then shows God this letter that he has received from the king of Assyria. And verse 17, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, 
which he has sent to reproach the living God. Hezekiah says, God, the king of Assyria is laughing at you. And listen to the terrible things that he has said about you. 18, of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries. That's true. It's true. Assyria had defeated every nation that they fought up until this point. 19, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. That's why they lost. They were trusting in a chunk of wood and some god that they made up that would sympathize with their sin that they didn't want to repent of. Those kind of gods are real good while you're sinning, but when you're in trouble, they're useless and you're dead for having followed your lust and therefore followed them. And that's why all these other countries were defeated. Verse 20, Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, and all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord, even you only. In other words, Isaiah says, God, show Assyria that you're boss. Show Assyria and that arrogant king of theirs that you are different from all those other so-called gods that they have defeated. Beat them. Make them understand that you are the one true God. Now that's a prayer that God is interested in answering because it seeks his glory. And it will result in his glory too. Study all of God's word with me at the Bible verse by verse dot com. To be a part of this ministry, pray for me and God's word. And when you take a break from studying, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. Thanks for studying. See you next time.